Hello and welcome to another day with a Jewish mother and a Latina. We are very excited today because we are going to learn some healthy cooking from our very, very good friend, Nicole Hecht, who knows how to cook all kinds of things in a healthy way and still make them taste good. It's amazing. Yeah. So Nicole, what are we making today? Well, I'm an Italian mom. <laughs> If you know anything about Italian food, it's generally very heavy. It's a yes. lot of cheese, a lot of carbs. So, and I, I love Italian cooking. It's what I was raised on. But I have had to come up with some healthy ways. So today we're gonna make my version of a bolognese sauce. Ooh. Now, traditionally a bolognese sauce has pork and beef in it, as well as cream, Ooh. which is very, very heavy. I could, it's one of my favorite things to eat, but I could eat two bites of it, and then, you know, it's you don't want to eat anymore because it's, it's too much. Yeah. So I came up with this recipe that has extra vegetables in it, and I used turkey meat instead Excellent. of beef and pork, because beef and pork, of course, is very heavy. And instead of putting it over pasta, I prepared some spaghetti squash for us to Ooh. eat it over. So it's actually carb-free. So this is safe for, wait, keto and paleo, and it's gluten-free. So, you know, you got Aunt Maria, she's doing paleo. You got Joe, yes. he's, yes. he's keto. You know, everyone cousin Gina, she so can't eat everyone something. Yeah. Everybody, right, and you, you want to cook Italian, you want to make a healthy meal. Just hearty meal for everybody. <laughs> like, you want to make a hearty meal for everybody. So this is a good so um, wait, so start you, here. You made up this recipe yourself? I, I did, yes. That's impressive. Fabulous. I did, I came That's up with impressive. it love through, it. you know, like, knowing how to make bolognese sauce and then being right. like I don't want to make bolognese sauce so I actually also can make this vegan so I'll explain to you how to do that and you could also add pasta instead of doing the spaghetti squash mm -hmm. right. but if you're trying to watch your carbs um, spaghetti squash is great because there's a lot of water in it right it's mm -hmm. very they're light and when they're caramelized they they come out really nice <gasps> so Ooh. the way I make them wow they're they, they're a little time consuming to get them done the right way I'll just leave them in for now. But you can't really overcook them, right. which is what I like. Yeah. You, can, you can kind of throw them in there. You want them to be charred. Can we bring them dark. forward so that yes, can we see can? Them? I'll just move this over here. Okay, so what I did was I poked a bunch of holes in each one. I microwave it for eight minutes, and then you stick them in the oven. And oh, they kind of they, they start <gasps> to pull apart like this. Now I'm gonna leave these in the oven because you almost want them to be like blackened. Like falling apart. Too. Yeah. Wait, so, so you say you put olive oil on them? Yes, yeah, so you put olive, you flip them like this. You put olive oil, salt, pepper, you kind of massage it in there. And then I like to put a little garlic powder over it. Mm. Then you turn them all, I think they call this okay. flesh side down. Flesh side down. <laughs> and you, you kind of can roast them. They've already been roasting for a while. You can eat them and like this. It smells incredible in here. It does. It, it they, does. They come out really nice. Yeah, they're really sweet. They're not fun to eat by themselves. They're right. just not. Right. But um, I can understand that. As, I, as a pasta replacement, I'm just going to switch these. Yeah, like, see, these are getting nice and charred. As a pasta replacement, they're really good. Do so you, the oven do you prefer them yes. to zucchini? You know, spaghetti like, like zoodles. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's just easier to make. It's more time consuming if you want to like caramelize them and char them. Right. But it's a set it and forget it thing. You put them in the yeah. oven, you go about your day, you come back and they're done. Whereas the you have a zoodle, a, a yeah, the, zucchini yeah, yeah, it takes yeah. a long time. It's um, and they're kind of wet and they're kind of wet. Yeah. They right? fall apart. Yeah, like zucchini can. It gets very. I don't want to say mushy. But they get a little mushy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this, you want them to be soft. Like you don't want an al dente spaghetti squash. Right. But right. they do hold the pasta a little bit better. You oh, can okay. almost spin it and like pick it up like it's pasta. Peter, it becomes like an we angel found hair. A replacement for zucchini. So now, you said caramelize it. Is that what you meant when you said with everything you did before you put it in? Yeah, or? it kind of just like gets blackened, and I'm calling that caramelizing. It's not really, you know, when you caramelize okay. something, you have to do it on the stove. But yeah, it gets blackened and sweeter, and like. No, just oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it gets, yeah, black and sweeter and just like soft and easy to Very work nice. with. So okay. that's what we're so doing. So how long have they been in there? So I think I popped those in at like 10, 15, 10, 30. Oh, wow. And you could eat them like this. I'm going to leave them in there though and just let them, let them keep let going. Them keep going. going. Yeah. 400 is the standard. I, I think 400 is the best, but again, I invented this recipe. If you have something <laughs> better that you have going on at home, go for it. Um, 
Okay, now, we're gonna start by, this is all done in one pan, which is nice. I love one pan. Nobody has yeah. it there already. So in here is garlic, a little red onion, and some fennel. Ooh. Yeah, it's, fennel's optional. You don't have to put fennel in it if you're not a fennel person. However, fennel is really good for your digestive system. Mm -hmm. Really? Um, yeah, when I was a kid, they would hand fennel out between courses at like Christmas and Easter, and it's supposed to help you digest. Now, at that point, like, <laughs> what's really gonna help you digest? But then they pull a fennook and they try to get me to eat this fennook. Is that an Italian thing? thing? I believe it's an Italian thing, yes. Fennook, I like it. They you can turn it Jewish fennook. by going fennook. Yeah, yeah fennook. but no. yes. And I'm sure it would help at a, a Jewish meal as well. Fennook doesn't sound very Italian. It almost sounds like it should be Fellini. 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 I was gonna Fanuki. say. Fanuki. I I I should have looked this up, but I I think it's one of those. It's all actually a longer word, but they they cut it off because oh. we all speak. You know, like, they all spoke um, mozzarella. Like right, <laughs> calling it mozzarella. Right, and it's really a ricotta. Well, it should be ricotta. Ricotta, exactly. Yes. So okay. I think it's it's another word for it is anise. It's an overlooked ingredient. Oh, Honestly, like, yes. chop it up. Slice up some onion, toss it with salt, pepper, olive oil, and pop it in the oven. Fennel is so good as a side dish by itself. Yes, mm, very good. So I throw it in here. Okay. We're also, actually, let me grab my little, I like to use one of these. Ooh. Because it covers it, but it's a, like a splatter guard. It covers oh, it. that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Like now, how long, you're just making these. I'm softening these because we're okay. going to okay. cook our turkey in this. Okay. That's another reason I like fennel. It gives it a little bit more of a flavor. You know, they often use fennel in sausage. Right. So it's right. just a nice extra thing in there um, to flavor this whole thing. Because right. we're going to cook the turkey and then remove it ah. before we finish cooking everything else. Got it. So we're going to set it aside. Okay. That's so cool. This looks amazing. Yeah. And all of this is the turkey in and it smells fantastic in here. Yes. You've been adding a little bit of what? Salt and pepper? Yes, I have my, my salt and my pepper. Your salt? That, oh wait, can, can I, can, what Pete, you need to get a shot of this. <laughs> because she's obviously from New York. <laughs> and it says salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Not we sponsored. Need, <laughs> we need to buy this for Randy. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm oh, sorry. So I I've been <laughs> had to put that in there. So I've been adding salt and pepper. <laughs> I add it. I add it as I go. You know, I you end up putting a lot of it in. I never yes. even write it in a recipe. You just um, do it. You just do it. Okay. So I'm gonna remove the splatter guard. I like to use that because often when you put a lid on, it like steams it out. Right. This kind of lets the air out. So now we're gonna put the turkey aside for now. Okay. I never okay. saw a splatter guard. Did you? I have one with a with an arm on it. Oh. It sort of looks like more like a screen, like a screen. Oh, okay. Like almost like a strainer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's no, this is but I like that. That's very fancy. <laughs> Where did you get that? Pampered Chef, not sponsored. Uh. I, <laughs> I uh, splurged a little and, and picked one up for myself. And I was, my mom, you know, people were like, when do you use, I use it every day? It, it was a I would use that. Yeah. yeah. I would use that's that. Awesome. If it's now, not here when we leave, just don't worry about it. I'll just she <laughs> took go on my Pampered Chef account. She took it. <laughs> So, okay. you throw me under a bus, Latina. <laughs> I know your ways. I don't have to tell her it wasn't me. I know. So now, I didn't wash out the pan. I just left, I forget what you call it, when you leave like a, when you cook a meat and you move it over and then you don't clean it out. But you don't clean out the pan. Oh, okay. you keep the flavors in there. Right. Yeah. Right. There's a word for it though. Yes, there is. It's called, I look, it'll, it'll come. come. It'll keeping come. the flavors it'll in. Come. Keeping the flavors, <laughs> yes. It's keeping That's the flavors in. Yeah. So now I'm putting um, more onion. More onion. Yeah, a lot of now, onion. I see onion. red onion. Does it have to be red? It be It doesn't have to be red. I'm a red onion person. Okay. Uh, I feel like it's a little sweeter sometimes. Like I always use red onion for no particular reason. Mm -hmm. um, but I like it for this this recipe. It also, I like cooking with color. You'll notice this, there's a lot of colors yes. in this recipe. So, um, That's how you know it's healthy, too. That's, yeah, there's color. a lot of... No beiges. No beiges, <laughs> right. <laughs> Although, funnily enough, I did read that toddlers, like my son doesn't like to try my food, and I read that toddlers only like to eat beige food. Mm, They're only like sense. comfortable eating beige food. Like pancakes, like, waffles, yeah, right. bread, it chicken nuggets. Sense. Yeah, it's, it's comfortable for them. It is. It's comfortable. Right. I can't Com speak today. Com it's comfortable for them. Um, 
I became British for a moment. It's comfortable. <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> okay, so we have this turkey aside. Yes. Now, I was saying you could make this a vegan dish just by skipping this step, obviously, and cooking lentils, red lentils um, or brown lentils. Cook them and set them aside. And you would add them in the same way we would add the turkey at the end. Oh, so you have okay. to boil lentils, you would boil them in water, then if you wanted to toss them in the same uh, salt, pepper, olive oil, fennel, onion, and garlic, you could toss them like that and put them aside. And then we'll add them in at the end. Okay. Okay. So now we've got this kind of cooking. And we're going to add, now this is, I'm just going to add a little more olive oil here. Olive oil now, is very healthy. It is, yeah. It's one of the better oils to, to use. Now, in traditional bolognese sauce, you do have onion, garlic, um, carrot, and celery. So this is kind of where more of the traditional is coming in. Mm -hmm. And I did add a little bit more fennel here. So we're also going to put that in. Um, and you're going to add salt and pepper again. Again. Salt and pepper. Yeah, I, you salt and pepper to taste kind of at every step. Um, so you're not measuring, you're doing it all like grandma style. Kind, kind of a little grandma bit of style. this and a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, I'll say this was, these carrots were small, so I used a few of them. But if you get like a big carrot, you use two carrots and like three celery stalks. Okay. Let's nice. say, you know, you want it to be gotcha. nice and spicy in there. And the carrots do make it kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to let that cook for a minute. You want those to get soft. And now I notice while we're waiting for this to cook, you have the fennel stalks over there. I do. So I, you know, I don't use the stalks in this particular recipe. But what you could do is you have the fronds here. Mm -hmm. That's what these little hair things are called, and the <laughs> top of the stalks. And what I like to do is save them for the next day. But you could you could make like a nice rice out of it. You cook. I like jasmine rice. Cook jasmine rice, and at the bottom you put, you know. Garlic, onion, salt and pepper, and then the fennel fronds. And you saute those and then put the rice in and it really makes for a nice side dish there. Mm. And again, yeah. fennel is really healthy. It is an overlooked vegetable. People, I don't really hear a ton of people cooking with fennel. So I don't. I like to I use lots it. of parts of it. Yeah, go out and buy some fennel and experiment. Seriously. I wonder if my kids would eat it. Onion. <laughs> you just make, toss it with I, onion, olive oil, salt and pepper, and put it in the oven. It's so good. Um, Hmm. Interesting. So Nicole, is it okay if I just move in with you so I don't have to ever cook again? Come on over. I cook every <laughs> night. Okay. Um, so what I, another thing I like to do with this dish is I did prep a lot of it, but you can actually cook it, um, cut everything as you go. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't okay. really take that long to chop everything because right. you're putting so many things in. So the prep right. time is like nothing because you're just prepping as you go, right, right. which is really nice. Um, I'm cutting up an, a zucchini and I'm cutting up a yellow squash. Yellow squash. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Now I have to tell you, as kids, we knew corn. Yep. <laughs> and string beans. Broccoli. Broccoli. New broccoli. Uh, beans, and that was the extent of our yes, our. Well, me too, kind of. It was like. No, I was kind of a picky eater as a child as well. Really? So my mom like made what I would eat. So we ate a lot of broccoli. Right. Mm -hmm. My brother would like only eat broccoli. Definitely ate a lot of broccoli. Um, as I got a little older, she started making mac like pastas with zucchini in it. And because it's sweet and because it's with pasta, which, I, you know, who doesn't want pasta? Right. We would eat that. But yeah, as a kid, same. Potatoes, maybe string beans, and broccoli. Right. And that was really all we would eat too. So I'm trying right. to expose Vito and Donna to You're doing a good job. Different things. So she's know. eating table food now? Or not really? She's eating like baby food. I've oh, I've tried to do, do you make her, her do you things. make her baby food? I tr I try. <laughs> she, she likes the jar better. Which is a little insulting, but it's okay. Like you even know. like sweet potato? Uh, we haven't I haven't tried sweet potato. Fresh yet? We have to go to bed. We're actually well, like bananas. Some up. Like I would think bananas would be. Yeah, like bananas. I yeah. gave her. I gave her um, brought like steamed broccoli, like a piece to like mm -hmm. taste. I gave. I made carrots. Mm -hmm. Like I steamed pieces of carrot for her to even pick up while we're eating. Right. So I'm try I'm trying. You know, but as far as like baby food, I need her to eat and go in a jar of stuff because she won't eat. I made right. her like an um an avocado. She she just 
Gay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even cook this. <laughs> What's the matter? But she made like the baby, baby out like this face. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. this, I believe, right? Look. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. Her face got red. She went like. She's like. <laughs> oh. What about everybody else likes my cooking? <laughs> no. So that's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. It's smelling good. It's smelling good. Looking good. Smelling good. All right. So once I these. I love, love, love the colors. I just love it. Is. It's so pretty. I just love. That's the thing I love the most. Now she's more color. So we're adding more yellow and green here. Yellow and green. So we're putting some of these guys. Red in. and yellow and green. So and once those are and nice and, and soft, right. we're just gonna add some zucchini. Um. I do like to add a little more olive oil as you, know, you go, as right? You go, just a little. And is that EVOO or just EVOO? Mm hmm. But again, your, your preferred. Right. I don't really, this is a hobby, I don't really know what I'm doing. Yes, you do. <laughs> my mom, you know, my mom taught me how to cook. Shout out my mom. Hey, mom. Um, hey, mom. She, hey, dad. <laughs> hey, dad. Yeah. Does your dad cook? He does not. Oh, okay. he, he he grills. Yeah, that he counts. Does cook. I think that counts. It absolutely does count. Doesn't He's... Peter grill? Yeah, he cooks yeah. too. Oh, that's true. He does cook. He's a keeper. Yeah, all this and he cooks too. <laughs> oh my goodness, they love it. And he takes the garbage out. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, does he have a relative for me? <laughs> <laughs> that is important. No. Oh, all right, so it has married. to cook down for a couple minutes, I would say. Okay, so as you can see, my Latina friend loves to cook. And my Jewish friend likes to watch other people cook or <laughs> somebody else cook for her. That's right, because as we've said many times before, Vivian is a DIYer. Yeah. I am a BIYer. Yeah. She does it herself, I buy it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I get somebody else to cook it. <laughs> so I'm looking at these tomatoes. What did you call these tomatoes? What are these? Um... They're constellation tomatoes. So they have lots of different colors. Yeah, they're so pretty. They're very they sweet. Um, I like to, I splurge a little on these. Now a way you can kind of save some time or if you're really not into chopping up a bunch of tomatoes, you could use a can of tomatoes here. I would use a 10 ounce can or a box. That's fine. Whatever your favorite chopped tomato is or I would even say like diced tomato. These are like colorful inside. Aren't they yeah. beautiful? It's like a little rainbow. Yeah, they're called Constellation tomatoes. They're by the brand Nature Sweet. I do like to use this company too. These are a little more expensive than other tomatoes, but this is a very socially conscious company. They employ lots of um, di a diverse group of people. They have uh, farms in Mexico and they treat their employees really, really, really well. They actually have this cute little thing where you can, when you open the top of the tomatoes, you can look up like Francisco. Francisco. Is, um, yeah, he's one of their farmers. You can like look up stories wow. about the farmers. It's really sweet. That's incredible. And they, yeah, there's a lot of employee That's incentives, and they give a lot of um, like room room to move up in the company. They're not just like low level wow. farmers. They treat their employees well. So I do like to support this. It's a Very big company, nice. but it's a nice company to. They treat their employees well. Cool. One thing okay. I picked up as soon as I met Nicole was that she's very socially conscious yes. and very environmentally correct. She's a tree hugger. Yes. Right. She is a misplaced hippie and we yeah. love her. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to step out of your way. Okay. So we'll take care of what Thank you, you so much for yes. slicing those up for me. We're just going to put these all right in here. Everything's going in the same pot and we got to let these cook down here. Right. I so love one pot cooking. It's beautiful. so easy. Same, seriously. That looks really and the cleanup is so much easier. Beautiful and colorful. Look at all of these colors. I right? love yeah. it. You know, it really makes you feel like you're doing something. Good for your body here when you see all of these colors. So pretty. Now these tomatoes, again, very sweet. They cook down nice and thick. I think if you were to use a different like a beefsteak tomato or something, it wouldn't thicken up as much, but these are like hearty tomatoes. So you kind of got to just let these really thicken up. And how long does it usually stay in the pan when you do this? I would say maybe like 15 minutes I could, you could leave oh, okay. it. So not too long. You're not actually adding any sauce to that. No, this is a full no, making the sauce. Whole, right? The, you're getting the sauce, like you said, before, mm -hmm. from the tomatoes instead yeah. of using a can. Instead of using a can. Right. A can is fine. I do not condemn a can. I use a can sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these fresh tomatoes just give it a different yeah. taste. They give it a different flavor. 
And it's just nice to know you everything in here is a fresh vegetable. Right. Like every single thing. Now yes. here's where I would put the lid And on. Francisco was involved. Francisco is so right. involved. He's so cute. You he don't know like Francisco. Francisco. We like Francisco. We like Francisco, yeah, if you're you. watching this. <laughs> <laughs> we really like we you. We applaud you. I think, can I see that? Of course. So you said there's an actual okay. Yeah, it's really cute. So go. Francisco G, maintenance yeah. specialist. I think I've checked him out, this guy. I, I actually do watch the videos because oh. they're so cute. I think he's like tag him. Going to should. school. Yeah, he's so, like, Francisco, we're using your tomato. Tag Francisco. <laughs> Hashtag Francisco, you guys. Absolutely. That's adorable. Yes. Yeah, it's very it's, nice. It is really sweet. I Francisco like G. I like hearing Francisco those G choice. specifically. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Not Francisco, L or H. <laughs> so this is going to sit for how long now? I would give this. Like you wanna see it's already even starting to like really cook in there. Like, so I would give it ready. like fifteen yeah. minutes okay. maybe. And stirring it every few minutes. Keeps yeah, stirring it every few minutes. You wanna even like add salt and pepper. Okay. Liberal you know, excellent. Liberally, would that be the word? Right. I guess. Yep. Yeah, as much as much as you like. Okay. If you like it salty. Now something I remember hearing about um, shout out Sarah Doyle. Sarah Doyle once was <laughs> like out of Weight Watchers. I was like, I ate like turkey last night. What's wrong? And she's like, Oh, turkey's a turkey's actually salty. It's like a saltier meat. So something to think about if you are watching your salts. Apparently, there is more salt in turkey than in like chicken, say. However, I feel that turkey is a little. It, it kind of kicks it up a little bit more. It's the salt. Juicier, yeah, I guess, yeah. It's like juicier, it's a little more flavorful, it's a little more like protein dense, I felt, mm. than like chicken, white meat. So, but if you are watching your salt, I think it's a thing to think about. Like maybe watch the turkey intake. I don't know. Or use the turkey and less salt in the dish. Or use the turkey and less salt, exactly. So and then it doesn't taste the same. Right. <laughs> but I always also always use a salt shaker. I have made the mistake of like taking the canister of salt and putting oh, no, it in my no, no. hand and then like, doing that, and it, it's always too much. Um, my husband really likes salty food. I do not like salty food. My pap pap was always would smack my hand if I was salting my food. Mm -hmm. So it, it was something that was uh, always in my head, like don't don't add salt. So um, how's your husband's blood pressure? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? We should get that checked out. Actually, <laughs> I think it's done. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. So we're going to let this cook for about 15 minutes mm -hmm. and yeah. then check in with it and, and let us. Ooh. Um, Oops. See how it looks. Okay, they're making me work now because they said even a Jewish mother needs to know how to cook. But this is actually kind of fun. You work just scraping out all that spaghetti squash and it looks delicious. And it's so easy. It comes out so easily. Right. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yes. It's, it's a nice uh, thing to hold this, this sauce to. Do you, what do you do with the skin? Anything? I don't do anything with the skin. I think there are ways you could use it as like a bowl. Right. I have actually served just that out and put the sauce in that and oh, served it as so like fun. a spaghetti squash bowl. That's really um, good. That's you know. fun. Yeah, like if it's just me and, and Adam eating, I do that. Um, but when it's like a that would be fun with company though. It is. Yeah, if you yeah, just yeah, a bunch yeah. of little it's pretty because it's a pretty squashes. presentation. Yes, yeah. yeah. these are these are cooked down so they wouldn't. Right. Oh, this one is like point, <laughs> even the skin is like coming off. Here. But it's cool to like pull it, you know, pull it out yeah. as you go. It's cool. Yeah. Very cool. So that looks like it's ready to go. This is ready to go. So now we're gonna put the turkey back in here. Now, if you were gonna make this vegan, this is the point where you would also add the lentils back in. Oh, so gotcha. you don't have to use turkey, you can make this a vegan dish. Um, but I'm gonna put the turkey back in, and then you just cook it for another minute or so, kind of letting all the flavors get together. Just toss that in there. Very cool. Now, another thing you could do, if you're not into spaghetti squash, maybe you want something a little more like, a, like an old school Italian thing, what you could do after you let this cook for a few minutes, you could add two cups of water, let it boil a little bit, and then add a cup of orzo. Oh. And then let the orzo cook. That's what I make all my friends when they have a baby because I say you can eat it over your kid's head and it doesn't spill. It's like a nice, <laughs> thick, like, um, like an or I call it an orzo bowl. Right. So instead of using spaghetti squash, if you did want a pasta, I also recommend instead of a pappardelle, which is what traditionally bolognese sauce is served over, which is like a wide, flat pasta, right. I, I would put a Put orzo right in here, and it's it's delicious. Awesome. And it like thickens it up even more. So we're just gonna let this cook Ooh. a little bit. How about rice to cauliflower? Rice cauliflower too. You could even serve this probably over rice. I also have done this with 
uncased sausage and put that over rice. Oh wow. That's really good too. Yeah. There are a lot of lot of variations You're very on this dish. I just tried um, recently um, rice cauliflower mm. with beans, like Spanish beans. Oh yeah. I want to still eat beans, but I'm trying to stay away from the rice. And it was delicious. Yeah. It was like rice almost, cauliflower is another it was nice yeah, it's, and it's, and you can buy it. You don't have to like rice it yourself. Right. You can buy it even like frozen, frozen and it's it? still so no, good. It was still, it was absolutely. It tasted actually like al dente rice. Yeah, right. It, it no, does. It I does. Found, I tried it once and it was very watery. No, no I, I think you have to you have to really cook it if you're making it like yourself or right. if you're doing it with. Like a frozen, you have to like cook I the water out. I did it in the microwave. I did it in the microwave with a little steamer. Oh, the jam bags! It comes in one of those steam bags. You put it in for hours. I've seen those. Yes, and and that's how I made it. I didn't find it. I just served it as a bowl, like rice. Mm. I put my beans on there. My hot sauce. Delicious. So good. So you can, do that with you can absolutely do that with this. Yeah, and then you're adding another vegetable right, to this right. whole equation here. Okay. Um. Yeah. So how are you doing over there, Tracy? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. Scratching these things clean. So excited. This looks delicious. <laughs> okay. yes, this yes. Looks, so let me ask you, for a family of four, thank you. how many four. spaghetti squashes would you use? I would say two big ones. They're, they differ in size throughout the year. Like right. The last time I bought them, they were really small, so I bought four. This time they were pretty big. I would say two. This was two. Okay. That's a lot. Four. And there's still lot. plenty left over. That's delicious. So, so you and the extra plate is for our, our wonderful cameraman. Yes. Yeah. Peter, can you see how beautiful this is? Absolutely beautiful. Garnished with some pecorino, Romano cheese. Beautiful. Mm. Delicious. Okay. And it smells delicious. I'm all about the smell, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is delicious. Mm, thank you. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm. And it's very healthy. It is carb, virtually carb-free. Yeah. And vegetables are carbs. And it's virtually points-free. It's virtually points-free. Mm. Just the cheese and maybe the olive oil, which is yeah. more like a point or two. Right. This is delicious. Nicole, thank you so much for having us. This was a pleasure. Thank you so Over. much. I'm so happy to have you guys in my kitchen today. Oh my God. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I know. And your beautiful family. Oh. Yes. Your Adam and your Miss Donna <laughs> and Mr. Vito. I know. Oh my God. They're so delicious. Yeah. This is fantastic. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime, ladies. I love you guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of A Jewish Mother and a Latina. And let me tell you, you need to make this a home because we are really enjoying it. Delicious. Invite us over when you're